Только доску, да. А, я с пустыми руками пришел. Yeah. Мы уже Сейчас флешка достала из Есть, есть. to this morning session, Ivan Dinika from uh, the Global Institute of Mathematics, with the title of the So, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for invitation, for uh, gathering us in this place. Uh, now, uh, I will speak about, uh, not quantum, but just classical theory, and it will be our joint work with Максим Прасов. Well, uh, what uh, the motivation we started with is quite different from what we came to. And motivation was, uh, rightly speaking, is to classify uh, knots and links in the three space in in such a way that we don't need to introduce more uh, substances like Hacking Manifold. And more precisely, we want to classify knots and links just on a diagrammatic level. Well, of, well, of course, everyone is very skeptical about that, but still there is some, some hope that we can improve, say, with the Meister's theorem, uh, for example, by giving an explicit simple explicit bound on how many of the master moves you need to, to go from one diagram to another. Uh, well, so far it's not, it's not achieved, uh, but uh, uh, something good can be told, as I showed several years ago, about a trivial link, trivial knot, if uh, we use not all, all ordinary plumber diagrams, but so-called rectangular diagrams, or grid diagrams, which is the same if we consider oriented knots and uh, uh, rectangular diagram is just the same thing without orientation. So let, let me start by the definition of a rectangular diagram. Uh, well, the best definition is the following one. A rectangular diagram is a finite set of points. Crossing uh, vertical is overpass, horizontal is underpass. 
Uh, and what I want to stress is that I don't care about crossings, and I don't care about the number of crossings. I care about the number of points. So the complexity of rectangular diagram is the number of points, or which is the same the number of edges. And one typically takes one half because this number is always even. Okay. Uh, so uh, what, I, what I proved a few years ago is that uh, uh, if we have a, a rectangular diagram of the trivial knot, then we can simplify it monotonically to a square. And I will give you a precise definition in a moment. By using some elementary moves which we place in this approach, uh, ordinary with the master moves. Okay, so let me define the moves for rectangular diagrams. Uh, the first type of move uh, is cyclic permutations. Uh, which is, well, it, it depends on the uh, point of view. Uh, I prefer to think about the rectangular diagram to live not on the plane, but on a two-dimensional torus. So the diagram is actually on a torus. Say like this. Which means that we can move, uh, we can move po points cyclically in horizontal and vertical direction. Well, Formally, if we stick with the original definition, uh, if all vertices are in this square and just two vertices are above, we can move them, keeping their horizontal position, uh, to the bottom. Okay? And the same we can do with uh, the inside the square. Well, uh, we, we can move them uh, so that they are now below. The well, if this square. If and all other vertices no, are no, inside no, this square. No, I don't believe. If they are above the square here, if you move them one period, they will get inside the square. Well, this square is not is not this one. Ah, it's, okay, I see. It, I, I see. <laughs> if, if this square contains uh, or rectangular contains okay. all vertices except two, I, I then, okay. then you can move them yes. okay. to the bottom. The same the same you can do with uh, uh, vertical edges. You can take the leftmost one and move, move it to the right. Yes. Move it to the right. Uh, so, but but you can just think that this diagram is lives on a two-dimensional torus. Then this move is just uh, a trivial one. It doesn't change anything. So the order of edges is regarded as uh, cyclic order. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of trivial. Yeah, but, but note that this changes uh, the crossing number quite uh, in, a, uh, in some random way. So, but I don't care about crossings. Uh, so, more interesting moves are called exchange moves originally, and now they, some, they are sometimes called computations. Uh, they allow to do something uh, less trivial with the diagram, namely to exchange uh, edges. If you have two edges of the diagram, so, uh, edges are just pairs of vertices uh, such that they are connected when we draw the picture by horizontal or vertical line. So neighboring edges are such that uh, they are parallel. So they these pairs of point lie on uh, parallel lines, and there are no vertices uh, in between these lines. So no vertices here. In this strip. Okay? Then uh, in some situation you can exchange these edges, which means that you move uh, these two points, uh, every pair of points to the other line. Yes, like this. This is exactly the region, the region without points. All of the, the yeah, yeah, you can only only a part of the band. Uh, all of the band. 
Well, I would prefer to define it just in this, in this case when there are no vertices in the whole sheet. Just, well, but, but you're right then that you can, if you don't have an obstacle, you can move and you get the same. But then it, it will be then uh, decomposed into uh, several such elementary exchanges. Okay? So well, when you can do this? You can do this when these uh, uh, edges do not cross each other when you move them. You can do it when one edge, uh, when they are nested, uh, at, the, at the moment when they, uh, the, when they cross, uh, they uh, get nested, okay, like this. And uh, in one situation, you cannot move them uh, when the corresponding, uh, uh, the edges when you project them to the corresponding direction, they are a lot partially like in this case. In this case, you, you should not move them. So, so this, this one is for me. And in most cases, it will change the uh, topological type of the link. Okay? Uh, and these moves, uh, all these moves preserve the number of points, preserve the number of edges. So, we need something to uh, increase or decrease the number of vertices. And these moves are called stabilizations and destabilizations. Uh, stabilization, a stabilization increases the number of vertices, destabilization decreases the number of vertices. And uh, you can do a stabilization at every vertex of the diagram in four different ways. So if this is a vertex of a rectangular diagram, you draw a small square such that this vertex is one of the vertices of the square, like this one. Okay, And then you replace this single vertex by three other vertices of the square. So here is the square. You remove this one and add uh, three others. Okay. Well, if you add edges, what 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 can you get for the corresponding planar diagram? Sometimes you get just nothing, like in this case. Yes, the diagram is just deformed in the plane. Uh, sometimes you get. Uh, so let us direct them in the opposite way. Sometimes you get with the Meister type one move. Okay. But I don't care in which direction uh, the edges go. I will distinguish, uh, in this talk, I will distinguish two types of stabilizations and destabilizations. Uh, this type will depend on the way we draw the square. There are four ways at every vertex. So if the square is drawn, uh, well, uh, southwest or northeast to the vertex, then it will be called type 1 stabilization or destabilization. Destabilization is just the reverse operation. And uh, if it is northeast or south, north, west or southeast, then it is called type 2 stabilization or destabilization. Okay? And uh, in order to, fo to formulate the results, I, I will use uh, the following graphic language. Uh, if I have two diagrams, say R1, R2, and draw a horizontal arrow, uh, this means that I claim there is a sequence of uh, exchange moves and cyclic permutations. So this will be read, read as exists a sequence of exchange, exchange moves and cyclic permutations. So horizontal uh, arrow uh, stays, stands for any sequence of elementary moves that does not change the number of edges. Okay? If I draw 
a vertical arrow, it means that there exists a uh, destabilization from R1 to R2. It go, goes down because the number of vertices goes down. Okay, so the direction corresponds some in, uh, is just to is, uh, suggest what, what happens to the number of vertices. If I want to stress that this uh, stabilization, uh, or, uh, if this destabilization is of type 1 or type 2, then I will put it here. So it, this would mean that there exists a destabilization of type 1. Okay? Uh, well, I can draw also a vertical arrow going up, but uh, I, I think I will not need it, but it, it would mean uh, stabilization. And uh, an arrow like this, waved arrow, uh, will stand for any sequence of elementary moves. So exchange moves, stabilizations, uh, and destabilizations, but if I want to restrict myself to uh, stabilizations of only of certain type, I will mark it here. So this would mean any sequence of elementary moves not including uh, stabilizations and destabilizations of type 2. Okay? But stabilizations and destabilizations of type 1 can occur in any number. Okay? So, now let me state uh, some results. Define the same link, the same uh, equivalent links. Define topological equivalent. If and only if uh, there is a sequence of elementary moves from one to another. So it is a replacement of the moves. And this theorem was proved uh, in a slightly different language by Peter Cromwell. Uh, he used not rectangular diagrams, but uh, an equivalent object, if you know our presentations. Uh, it has the same, uh, the same combinatorics, but uh, different presentation in this space. And, uh, but uh, the moves are also slightly different. He uses a larger number of stabilizations and destabilizations, but this is the equivalence of two statements is obvious. Okay? So what I proved uh, several years ago is if a rectangular diagram represents the unknown, if so if you, you can go you can use elementary moves to get a square then, well, if and only if actually, but the other, the other claim is trivial. Then you can go from this diagram to the square without using st uh, stabilizations. So what we get in this language is uh, that you have a sequence like this. So you, you make only exchange moves, cyclic limitations, and destabilizations. So this, this is what I call uh, monotonic simplification. And uh, with Maxim Praslov, we try to understand when uh, to formulate a condition when an arbitrary rectangular diagram of an arbitrary link admits such a monotonic simplification to, to something. Well, of course we would we wish that uh, uh, wished that every link has some canonical diagram so that we can go from any other monotonic link to this one, but of course this is not true. 
Uh, I hope this, that the number of such canonical diagrams is not very large and we can connect them somehow, maybe introducing, by, introducing some larger number of moves, but well, this is not, this is not yet uh, done. But what we understood completely is uh, the condition when uh, you can make at least one simplification step. So go uh, do some exchange moves and then simplify diagram by at least uh, one step. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, do I understand it right that in classical situation was uh, plain diagrams and classical writing moves? Yes. Not, diagram to the trivial mode where you must increase the yes. number of yes. crosses. Yes. And in this situation, you have a monotonous yes. uh, sequence exactly. of moves. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I posted it in 2002, but then there was some difficulty with the proof, and final final version was published in 2007. Okay. Uh, so what what is our result? Is uh, what is our main technical? Uh, well, uh, there are a number of equivalent formulations. I will give you the following one. If uh, we have uh, two diagrams, actually three diagrams, and R1 and R2 are connected by some number of moves excluding uh, type 2 stabilizations and destabilizations. Okay? And this diagram admits a type 2 destabilization. Then uh, diagram R2 also admits a simplification, which means we can go horizontally some number of steps and then go down. By type to move. Why not to return from R2 to R1 and then uh, apply Because this one, this error contains an uncontrolled number of stabilizations and destabilizations of type 1. And what I'm saying that I don't need stabilizations and destabilizations of type 1 to destabilize it. Well, the, the statement is uh, most interesting when this sequence is just a single destabilization. So what I'm claiming, I don't need to stabilize uh, by type 1 in order to simplify by type 2. Okay, and this will be related somehow to R3. Uh, by using, well, some number of stabilizations and destabilizations of type 1. Okay, so in some, in some sense it means that Simplifications of type 1 and type 2 are independent. By simplification, I mean uh, such, such a single step of going horizontally and then go down. Okay? So this is a technical result. And uh, you can understand the formulation and you can understand the, the proof without knowing anything about Legendre knots. But to be honest, I, I would like to, to give you the, some geometrical uh, picture behind this proof. Otherwise, it's, it looks very artificial. But actually, yeah. Parallel means one stabilization, or maybe more. Arrow down. Well, arrow down means just a single, a single one. Yeah. Horizontal means any number. Like this. Uh, roughly speaking, going horizontal way, I don't care about about uh, exchanges and cyclic permutations, and care about the number of vertices. Okay, so uh, what what is what is uh, the, the topology which uh, stands behind behind the ideas? Finally, we translated everything to combinatorial language so that no analysis is used. But if you know something about genre or not, you will understand why uh, why well, what what the, the, the whole proof means. Okay, so let me say a few words about. Genre means. 
Alexandrian links are just links in the three space, well, smooth links, such that they are tangent to uh, the standard contract, st contract structure. Standard contract structure is defined by this closed one, or this, form, this one form, dx plus y dz, dz and uh, it defines your plane distribution, which is non-integrable, yes? Okay. And uh, Legendre link means that uh, the restriction of this form to the link is zero. Uh, well, more explicitly, it means that if you parameterize your, the curve, then it, you will have equation x dot plus y z dot equals zero uh, along uh, along the knot. This equation allows you to express y as minus x dot over yeah. Uh, Which means that if you have a, the projection of this knot of this link to the x z plane, uh, then you know the you, you don't need to specify which is overpass and uh, underpass at every crossing because it is uh, completely defined by the projection. <coughs> so you you can draw just just the projection and you know the uh, uh, three-dimensional picture. Uh, well, I'm and uh, the rule is that the smaller the slope uh, at the crossing, the uh, at every crossing, the arc which has smaller slope should be underpassing. If if I'm not uh, if I if I wrote the proper sign, it should be like that. But Well, I'm not sure. Maybe I should. I, I have. I should put minus here and plus here. I, but but typically we have this picture. Well, it doesn't doesn't matter. So this picture is correct, and this this side maybe not correct. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. So but this this curve is never smooth because sometimes you have uh, zero that both uh, derivatives are zeros, and then you have a cusp. And in the XZ projection, you have a cusp. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, you can avoid triple crossings and uh, double cusps and things like that. And uh, things, situation when a cusp occur on the, uh, on another branch of the projection. Uh, the, such such pictures are called uh, front projections. So what is the relation between uh, rectangular diagrams and Legendrian knots. Uh, the relation is very simple. Uh, to every rectangular diagram, uh, with every rectangular diagram, we, uh, we can associate a front projection. Well, I will draw my favorite one, as usually. In order to get a front projection, you first rotate the diagram counterclockwise uh, some angle between 0 and 90, well, 45 degrees is perfect. You get picture like this. Then you smooth out, smooth out corners that look up or down. Yes, please. And other corners are turned into cusps. And you get the front projection of a Legendrian link. Okay? Uh, so if this is if this diagram is R, this Legendrian link will be called LR. Legendrian links are regarded up to Legendrian isotopy, which means that during isotopy the link must uh, stay Legendrian. Okay, and uh, this results in uh, subdividing every topological class of links into a uh, countable number of smaller classes of Legendre links. So for every topological type, 
of a link, you have a, a collection of Legendrian links which are isotopic but not Legendrian isotopic. And the connection, the precise connection of uh, internal diamonds to Legendrian links is this. Uh, if we have two rectangular diagrams which define Legendrian equivalent Legendrian links. So this, if links are Legendrian and they are equivalent, I assume that they are Legendrian equivalent. They are even identical in your... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, if and only if, you can go from one diagram to another by using, uh, without using stabilizations and destabilizations of type 2. So if, uh, roughly speaking, there are two Legendrian links associated to uh, every rectangular diagram, we can rotate uh, counterclockwise 45 degrees, we can rotate clockwise degrees. But if we rotate clockwise degrees, we should flip all crossings. Yes, in this way we get crossings uh, yeah, proper crossing set, uh, proper overpassing and underpassing and every crossing. And if you rotate the other way, uh, we, we should flip all of them. So uh, I denote by uh, R with such arrow the diagram obtained from R by rotation by uh, P over two. Now 90 degrees, yes, rotation by degrees. So we have two clockwise. Uh, clockwise, yeah. Yeah. As as the arrow suggests. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have two Legendre links associated to every rectangular diagram. L R and L R rotated. Okay. And type type one stabilization preserve and destabilization. Preserve this one and changes this. And type 2 stabilizations and destabilization keep this one fixed and change this. And roughly speaking, these two Legendrian links are independent. So there are a number of corollaries of uh, the result that I told you. Well, uh, I don't know whom to attribute this theorem because uh, uh, once you are told about the connection between rectangular diagrams and Legendrian links, it is very easy to prove. And uh, the first guy who told me about this connection was Bill Minesk, it was in 2003. But now it is, uh, if you are looking for a written account, it is uh, written in paper by Leonard Ng and uh, Dylan Thurston in 2008. But before that it was somehow, this, this knowledge was somehow distributed, so I don't know. I think Bill Minesk is the first one who noticed that. Uh, okay, uh, so what what are corollaries of our uh, uh, of our result? The corollaries are as follows. Uh, what, well, one of the nicest corollary is is this: if uh, Uh, if you have any sequence of elementary moves from R1, well, which is equivalent that R1 and R2 are uh, defined topologically equivalent links, then there exists such a sequence from R1 to R2 that the first half of this sequence contains only type 1 stabilizations and destabilizations, and the, the second part only type 2. Uh, so there exists R3 such that you can go from R1 to R3 without using type 2 stabilizations and destabilizations, and you can go from R3 to R2 by using, uh, without using type 1 stabilizations and destabilizations. So you can keep uh, one guy fixed, then modify the other, 
and then you keep this one and modify the first one. You can separate this. Could you, could you clarify? You're not claiming that there's exactly that there are those two genre types in each isotope class of the right? Um, excuse me. Is this, you're not saying that this implies that there's most two uh, genre isotope types in each isotope? No, 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 no. There are uh, infinitely many, uh, but, uh, well. Well, I, I guess it's just the top one. Well, to every diagram, you associate two ones, two Legendrian links. If you uh, perform a stabilization, then one of them stays fixed and the other changes. The other one. So, so here, this one is fixed. When we go from R1 to R3, this guy is fixed. It is in stays the genre the group. Well, uh, uh, well, uh, how the genre link is changed? It is changed also by operation which is called the stabilization or destabilization. And in the language of front projection, it looks uh, like like this. For example, adding two cusps without introducing a new crossing. And this operation does always change the genre type. It is. Uh, proved by using torsten benning number, which changes by minus one. Uh, so, uh, another, another way to formulate our result is this, that if, the, if one of these Legendre links admit a destabilization, which, is, which means going, going back after some Legendre and isotope, then the Corresponding uh, rectangular diagram admits a simplification. So if and only if. The other way is trivial, but this way is, is less <coughs> trivial. Okay, so uh, another corollary is for braids. There, there are also some uh, similar corollaries for transverse link, but I think I will omit it for, for briefness. So uh, another consequence uh, is for braid, which was known as. Jones conjecture. So Jones formulated as a, as a question. Uh, there are two equivalent formulations. And the original one is this. If uh, beta 1 and beta 2 are braids, Uh, such that uh, their closures are equivalent topologically, uh, topologically equivalent things. So this uh, uh, overline means uh, this closure. Uh, and they have minimum possible uh, number of minimum possible break index. Minimum possible number of strands. Then uh, they have the same algebraic crossing number, which is the same as right. So let me denote it by W. Uh, and w is the number of Positive crossings less the number of negative crossings. Okay. So sometimes called algebraic crossing numbers, sometimes right or of the braid. Okay, so you, you can have different braids, but if they minimize the braid index, they have the same right now. These are oriented links. Oriented links, of course, if you present the link by braid, then it is always oriented. The braid approach does not work for not oriented links at all. Okay. So another formulation, uh, uh, Malisic and Prachik noticed that uh, there is a formulation without using braids. In the, you can replace, uh, in this formulation, just replace braids by planar diagrams and replace uh, braid index. by the number of cycle circles. 
Planar diagram of what? A planar link diagram. Ordinary in, in the not rectangular. No, no, in, in the standard standard approach. Cipher circles. So what are cipher circles at every crossing? Whichever uh, whichever arc is over, over crossing, you smooth it uh, in this way so that to agree with the orientation, and you get in a collection of circles. If this number of circles is minimized, then the right number is invariant. Okay. So, but this is more general because uh, uh, it is equivalent. It is equivalent because you can go from a planar diagram to a braid, keeping the number of ciphered circles, and the number of ciphered circles becomes a uh, Break index and the right does not change. So it uh, just okay. Let me say so. This right is therefore a link invariant. Or yeah, yeah. It, it is a link invariant if you minimize the number of cipher circles or you minimize the break index. Okay. So the right is invariant. It was it was a question of Jones whether it is true because it was observed in practice. It was proved in certain for certain classes of nodes. And now it is a corollary of our result. And the second proof was obtained uh, a little later by Bill Minesco and uh, Lafontaine. Uh, well, uh, slightly different technique, but common, uh, similar in nature, but we used disk and they used an annually instead of in the proof. OK, and let me say a couple of, one more statement, which would imply the Jones conjecture. Uh, if again we have two breaks such that uh, their closures are equivalent as oriented links, then well I will use the same graphical language uh, for braids. But instead of type 1 and type 2 stabilizations and destabilization, I will use positive and negative mark of stabilizations and destabilizations. Well, I will explain in a moment. Then there exists another braid such that you can go from V1 to V3 by using only positive mark of stabilizations and destabilizations. And you can go from V3 to V2 by using all the negative. So, uh, well, I, I believe you know that uh, uh, you can relate any two braids whose closures are equivalent by conjugations and so-called mark of stabilizations and destabilizations, which uh, look as follows. You, you add one more string and one more crossing. And this crossing may be positive or negative. If it is positive, we call it positive mark of stabilization. If it is negative, we call it negative mark of stabilization. So uh, you can always go from one break to another if they represent equivalent things by first doing all positive stabilizations and destabilizations and uncontrolled number of conjugations, and then only negative stabilizations and destabilizations. And if you look what happens to the right number and the break index, uh, when you go, when you do this, then you can easily get this thing. It is then an immediate problem. So, okay, then I think I will stop here. You have two minutes more to. Congratulations. Uh, I didn't understand the last statement. Uh, is something that follows from your results. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that implies uh, the two conjectures. Yeah, this, uh, is, uh, okay. this follows from our result, mm -hmm. and John's conjecture follows from this. Yeah, okay. More questions, please? <coughs> so yesterday, uh, uh, the poster considered uh, uh, nodes in the uh, torus. So what? Nodes uh, which contain it in the torus. Okay. So it's possible to transform a presented setting for nonsense in the show? I don't know. I don't know if uh, there is any good way to extend this to nonsense surfaces. 
Yeah, product or software. Uh, I don't know. I I believe that it will it would be very difficult to extend this approach beyond uh, classical settings. It is important. For example, it is important that we take the standard context or context structure. We cannot do anything with other context structures in the three space. No, don't go in any way. Okay. So to apply this uh, uh, result, you need to know the minimum rate index. Yeah. Is that a desirable problem? Uh, good question. Uh, I'm not so sure. I'm, uh, I'm not so sure that you can practically use this. Uh, why it should be decidable. The so empirical minimum grade index that you find a table that knows but that's not it is decidable when you have a minimal rectangular diagram. Okay, minimal it, 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 it is decidable, yes. But for grade index uh, I'm not so sure because uh, well uh, you need to search if grades of smaller number the number of straights the number of grades with uh, fixed grade index is infinite. So I this, uh, this makes a problem. More questions, please? Thank you. 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 Thank Where is that?